from Floral Park, New York, Joe Dwyer, from Orangeburg, New York, Harold Letterman, and from New York City, Georgie Colon. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my right, wearing the red trunks, white trim. He weighs in at 205 pounds. His professional record, nine victories, eight defeats, two draws. He has five wins by way of knockout. He is represented by Cedric Kushner Promotions and hails from Newark, New Jersey. Introducing Maurice Mo. His opponent in the blue corner wearing white trunks, red trim. He weighs 248 pounds. His professional record, 65 victories, six defeats, 42 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Easton, Pennsylvania. Here is the former heavyweight champion of the world, the Easton Assassin, Larry Good evening, gentlemen. We went over the rules in the locker room. Listen to my commands at all times, and let's have a good fight. Touch gloves. A man who has had several of his career-ending fights right here on USA comes off his absolutely final fight January in Denmark. This is his 72nd pro bout. I remember Larry saying that he'd fight until his 70th. I thought he meant 70th fight. He probably meant 70th birthday. He started this comeback in April of 91, six years ago. Holmes's latest comeback in his 40s is longer than Harris's professional career. And Holmes uh, very early will try to take it to Harris, who is cool, and he throws out a Holmes-like jab. Harris knows, of course, that Holmes still can land with that right hand. Harris taking the shot right there Harris very deceiving record at nine eight and two even though as you mentioned Shawnee has been knocked down six times early in his career here's a kid who's a, a street kid wasted talent didn't train properly he was running the streets really didn't take it seriously he lost his first five professional fights taking those fights just for the money when he wasn't involved in drugs and just did not train the right way. And he said in some of those fights, you know, if he got tagged, got hurt, he just quit. But uh, ever since the last couple of fights, cut up, tough veteran Sam Hampton stopped him in the fourth. And then with lightning struck against James Thunder, a guy who does not get knocked down, and with his speed took out James Thunder two months ago in round number seven. And now he is brimming with confidence. Nothing like success to help your confidence. Maurice Harris. Good kid. He says, never judge a book by its cover. In the ring, he patterns his style after Henry Armstrong, great three-time world champion, just getting this to shape and fight. He says his best punch, the right cross, naturally left-handed, but fights right-handed. Now, what that means, he may have more power in his left hook than his right. Larry Holmes says in the ring, I'm wiser, more flat-footed. I don't waste as much as I used to. Better punches, and I make them count. Early in this round, you see what's happened. Larry went out to establish control, but Maurice is not ready yet to give up that control. So Larry kind of steps back and takes his time. This is experience talking. For Harris, he's got to be on that bicycle, move around. Make Larry's 47-year-old legs move. He can chase you. Harris. He might want to circle the other way so that Holmes has to reset every time to throw that right hand. Holmes coming off the loss to Brian Nielsen. Just about everybody who saw that fight over in England thought the uh, hometown fighter got that hometown decision. Yeah, he said, if he hit me five times, Larry said about Brian, said I'd be surprised. In Sweden, I won nine, maybe one even. First time Larry Holmes is in New York in Madison Square Garden since 1979 when he won a 12-round decision against Mike Weaver. In his third defense of the WBC title, that year Maurice Harris was four years old. That 
once again to round number one. Face looks like he's gone more than one round. Larry Holmes, we're talking about his fight here with Mike Weaver. Fight that 112. Actually, Holmes is stopping Weaver in the 12th. But getting in this fight is Larry now playing a little bit and upping the pressure on Maurice Harris. Harris complaining about low blows, but Larry doesn't like this movement from Harris. He hasn't seen that recently in his fights, circling around like Harris is doing. Well, Larry's been very selective in his opponents and uh, has never selected anybody who has this kind of speed and mobility and also could throw a, a jab into his face. Yeah, and the first thing to go on any fighter is their speed. Aging fighters lose that, that quickness, that sharpness first. He's been facing some very immobile fighters who are right in front of him or come right to him. And uh, look at the patience of Harris. He's just sitting back there. He's waiting. He's learning about Larry Holmes. Harris, who's talking before about the crushing night. He's about five and a half years old, watching Larry Holmes dismantle his beloved idol, Muhammad Ali, when then Ali, the aging former champion, would start trying to come back. And Larry Holmes just too much at that time for Ali. And that is in the mind of Harris. Never did he think he'd ever be in this position to help his idol with a payback. Yeah, Maurice said he couldn't understand how Larry Holmes could beat the greatest of all times in Muhammad Ali, but you know what? Many people did not understand that. I think Larry Holmes understood that. Well, Maurice that Harris then was five and a half. He said when he was older, his father kind of explained that it was the end of the line for Muhammad Ali. He, he even instruction the icon. Oh, there's five. a left hook by Harris. Remember against Thunder, Harris early was very tentative, a little tight, but then as the fight went on and they started to get in, gain with confidence, and at the end he looked like Ali yeah. with incredible spirit, incredible energy, and his speed able to take out Thunder. And good patience, too, from him. Look here in this early part of this fight, but what he doesn't want to do is he doesn't want to wrestle on the inside with Holmes. Holmes outweighing him will muscle him around 43 pounds that Holmes has on Harris shouldn't wrestle with a man like that you got to box him the name of the game is boxing look at that jab from Harris that's a jab like a young Larry Holmes got to use more of that Harris can't stop that Larry wants you to stand in slug stand flat footed inside 10 seconds to go in the second round and we'll pause for a word from your local cable systems Madison Square Garden is the scene. Al Albert and the champ, Sean O'Grady. A big crowd here at the theater. Pretty well packed to watch former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes now on his toes and on the attack. A good second round for Maurice Harris gaining in confidence. Both of them on the toes. Larry didn't like the display back in that third round that Maurice showed him. Out jabbing him and toward the end of the round really Popping him, giving him good movement with that left. You think there's any insult involved for Larry Holmes going up against a guy who's 9 8 and 2? Thinking about here's a guy who's 9 8 and 2 who just feels he could beat me? Sure, there is a lot of insult. And there's a lot of emotion in this fight. Larry came into this fight. He said, I haven't trained as well as I should have normally. So my weight is slightly elevated. And I, I do not expect a tough fight tonight, said Larry Holmes. How about Maurice Harris? He said Harris is decent, not hard punches, but he leans when he punches. So his fight plan is a busy jab and bang the body on Maurice. And you see inside, he's trying to bang that body downstairs. Maurice Harris should not wrestle like that. He knows Holmes is crafty. Says he has a great amount of respect for him, but he's too old. He said uh, that Larry has a good right uppercut fight plan. His speed is going to kill his boxing career. Talking about Holmes. Movement, the six, seven, eight punch combinations. Oh, good right hand from Holmes. Nice jab from Harris. Again, a couple, couple of good jabs from Harris. You got to kill that jab with your Holmes. Take care of that jab with a counter or a shot underneath, downstairs, under that, that left side rib. 
Maurice Harris ran the streets of Newark. When his mother died. He was 10 years old. He had four brothers, four sisters. They were all separated, sent to different families, different homes. He was raised by his grandmother. The teenager got into drugs, got into dealing drugs, saw his friends die in turf wars. And that's how he started his pro career. Lost his first five fights. But he saw what he was wasting. Turned pro at 17. There he is now blossoming at 22. A late bloomer at 22. But he comes off two very impressive victories. And you consider he lost his first five pro fights. His record uh, then looks a little different. And taking some steps goes in against Thunder. And lightning struck. And quickly on the rebound takes on Larry Holmes even though he's 47 Harris understands what would happen to his career if he could pull this one off tonight. Why are so many people. Round number four Larry Holmes comes right at a dancing Maurice Harris. He's always on the move always showing the angles good lateral movement by Maurice Harris. Taking some cracks. Harris showing tremendous poise. This guy's 9, 8, and 2. If he wins this fight, he'll be the hottest 10, 8, and 2 heavyweight in the world. Right now, the champ is in the Harris corner with the veteran trainer, Tommy Parks. Let's see how they feel their kid is doing. How do you like it? I like it pretty much. I think he's going to do that the rest of the night. Yeah. How about, how about the circling that you're getting? You're frustrating, Larry. You think? Yeah. And the, the next round we're going to go to the right a little bit. Yeah. Why? The right, little tell. Well, because Larry's getting used to him now. Yeah. So we'll change it up. Against a fighter like Larry Holmes, do you have to constantly change throughout this fight? Oh, sure. Yeah. Larry gets used to one thing. Why? Well, because Larry's smart enough. See, if you drop your left hand, Lyle will show over there after a while. Yeah. So you got to do your thing. See, that shows that right hand over the jab. So you got to be able to do your own thing. Tommy, Larry's 47 years old. Any body attack you should be worried well, about here? Yeah, but, you know, he wants to let him blow a little bit first. Yeah. You can't gamble too early with Larry. Yeah. He's so big. He's got 45 pounds on my kid, and he's still a big man. He punches pretty good yet. Yeah, and you can't rush against a fighter like Larry. What the next couple of rounds going to bring? Well, I think it'll be the same thing. Okay. We're going to box him until we get him tired, and then he's going to work. Nice and patient. I like your calm attitude over here. Thank back, you. back over to you, Al. They like what they see, and I don't blame them. Well, box until they get Larry Holmes tired. Meanwhile, Maurice Harris not really used to going rounds. A question of how he will be the second half of the fight. This is the fourth round. He's gone beyond the fourth only five times in his entire career. So Holmes may be thinking the same thing. Take Harris to the later rounds. But this is the first time in a long time that Larry Holmes is uh, fighting, if not a mirror image, at least uh, an opponent who can snap out the jab. A mirror image several years ago. This is uh, like a young Larry Holmes. Larry's got to be thinking, how do I beat this man? How do I slow him down now? I right, make him fight. Make him run into something from me. Larry, though, believes it's a matter of time. Still early in this fight, scheduled for 10 rounds. Larry's usually better in the last half. Action from that fourth round. Watch these shots. The holding and hitting from Larry Holm and the talking from Maurice Harris. You know, that's a retribution of the talking yesterday that Larry Holmes did to Harris, kind of. Take him out. There's a although, rolling right hand. Although when you see that replay, you kind of get a little nervous when you see a fighter get close to another one's ear. Yes, you do now, though. Heating up here in the fifth. Holmes looking to take it to Harris. Harris taking it back. This is where Holmes likes it. He's holding with the left, although Harris doing a good amount of holding and gets the warning from the referee, Jim Santa. Holmes holding with the left, trying to get Harris to stand still. Keep your head in one place where I can hit it. A moving target is hard to hit. And it's been a moving target throughout. Yeah, but how do you change? You don't change now. You had success and patience, and I know they like what's going on over there 
in his corner, Harris's corner. Holmes stepping into this one, looking for a tune-up to keep alive the hopes of Whoa. facing George Whoa. Foreman down the road. Harris, that's shaken off by by Holmes. Oh, Holmes has an outstanding chin. He can weather any storm. He is very durable. He has been stopped once in his career in 71 fights. That by Mike Tyson. He has been knocked down on three, okay, by three different fighters. The Tyson fight, Ronaldo Snipes, and Ernie Shavers. Last time down was Tyson, 1988. Larry Holmes in this comeback has had 20 fights adding on to his career. He's won 17 of those, the losses in championship fights to Holyfield and McCall, distance fights. And then the last one, muchly disputed against Brian Nielsen. So in his comeback, he's had one more fight than Harris has had in his career. But Harris says, I'm on top of my game now. And look what's happening here. Harris putting a little bit more pressure on. Larry trying to, to bring Harris in. Come in here and get some of this, is what Larry is saying. He didn't like all that moving in those first five rounds. You know, one thing that uh, Holmes was uh, picked up in watching Harris in the Thunder fight was he saw that when, when Harris was on the ropes, he'd be twisting with his body and his hands would be down. But so far in the fight, Holmes has never tried to take Harris to the ropes to try to take advantage of them. Here, uh, as close as they've been to the ropes, this fight has been in the middle of the ring. Yeah, well, it was back in July of 96 that Harris really became a new fighter. He employed Anthony Hamm, Tommy Parks, and that team has been able to give him confidence and also teach him some things about boxing. Anthony Hamm, Tommy Parks, also the same trainers for Ray Mercer. Mercer, former WBO heavyweight champion, who Larry beat. Oh, big right hand. At the end of the... He's undaunted in this fight. Watch this combination. Correct. The best shot so far from him. Harris over the top, over that left hand of Larry Holmes. Holmes now comes out with his hands a little bit higher. Look at his hands back. <laughs> this is a, an adapting Larry Holmes, still learning at 47. Whatever happens here, Harris uh, starting to make a name for himself. Only five knockouts for Harris, but uh, he learned in that Thunder fight, and also the fight before that, Sam Hampton cracking upstairs, cutting Hampton around the, the eye. And and the speed, the speed is the power. Yeah. And patience, too. There is a, at least one opportunity in every fight you have to knock your opponent out. You've got to find that right opportunity to make it now for Larry Holmes. That's what experience teaches you. And he has Harris holding on. Holmes in this fight now against the speedy Harris, only wishing he could do some of the things he used to be able to. A little more flat-footed, plotting, taking more hits than he's ever taken before, and understanding that that is going to happen, relying on the great skills and what's left of that to still be competitive in a fight against a 22-year-old. To get those skills back, you've got to get with that left jab. Larry Holmes has a terrific left jab, one of the best in boxing. And for Holmes, though, it's one punch at a time now. Maybe two or three, but certainly not the four or five that you used to see with his combinations off the jab. He can't waste any energy. Moves his legs when he has to, and here tonight he has to. He used to use the whole ring. Seeing more of that tonight from his opponent. Getting himself back at him tonight. Coming down to a minute to go in round six of the scheduled ten round fight. Larry Holmes before the fight saying, can't beat Maurice Harris, then that is it. We've heard that before. We don't take that quote seriously. That is it until he gets a phone call from George Foreman. That may be what he needs to get the call from George Foreman. This is all a ploy by Larry. He's always thinking. I don't know. But I get out of talking to Larry is, you know, this will be his last fight. His last fight before his next fight. He's definitely hanging him up unless, of course, some other fight comes up. Now, looks a little more focused this round. You know, he had a talk between rounds from Don Turner and Cliff Ramson, and they uh, did not like that rally that Harris had back in the fifth round. 
they fired him up. This is where Larry knows he's at his best. He takes these fighters, these young fighters, after the deep blue sea, lets them drown themselves. Larry Holmes, and this is this is what he looked like coming out after the first round. And some work being done in the corner, but Larry uh, finding that his opponent was right on top of him. We have uh, dispatched the champ now into the Holmes corner to get their feeling on what is going on with six rounds down and four rounds to go. The champ gets settled in that corner. Holmes now trying to cut off the ring on an elusive Maurice Harris. More elusive than uh, Holmes felt. All right, the champ is in the corner. What's the thinking there, champ? Don, a spirited performance from Harris. What's Larry thinking? Well, I think you'd take him into the later round just to see how he would do. You know, Larry knows he has to crowd this kid. The kid is very fast. And, and you know, he runs. He lets him out of the corner a few times. He's waiting on him to make a mistake. Did Larry expect this tough a fight from Mo Harris? Yeah, I imagine he did. He knew the kid was fast and so forth. But you know, the guy can't really hurt you. Uh, He's definitely fighting above his ability. What does Larry Holmes have to do now? Larry Holmes has to get closer to him, feign him, don't move back and punch him. Do you think he can knock out Harris? Yeah. Harris has a great vivacity to his career coming off the big win over Thunder. <laughs> well, if you want to call that a big win, you know, Larry is a veteran. You know, he should he should start doing what he's supposed to do. He started the last round, crowding the guy and punching him. I see more of a sense of urgency. Is, is Larry at all concerned about this fight? He hasn't, you know, he doesn't act concerned to me. You know, I'm not concerned. He just has to do what he has to do. Well, good. Don Turner, no concern over here in this corner, Al. You think Larry, you think Larry's winning this fight, though, don't you, Don? It's close. I think, I think he's a, he, He's winning the last two rounds, I'm sure. I agree with you on that. Okay, Al. They like, they think the tide has turned over here, and they like what they see so far. Well, Larry Holmes certainly winning the last 10 seconds, going upstairs to Maurice Harris inside the final minute of round number seven. Al Albert with a champ, Sean O'Grady on USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Former heavyweight champ Larry Holmes. The magical history tour continues at the age of 47. And now it is Maurice Harris who is very intent on just hanging right in there on the hold, awaiting the referee to break him up. Holmes looking for the right. Look at that left of Harris down low. Holmes is watching that closely. He's able to pounce. And we will pounce right now on this word from your local cable systems. Very interested spectator, Roy Foreman, along with his good buddy, Iran Barkley, who said he's going to try to make it to Tuesday Night Fights any way he can. But Roy Foreman, brother of uh, George. Scouting report happening right over there, huh? Yep. Taking some notes. As if he's going to find out anything new about Larry Holmes, right? <laughs> But uh, there is a... We found out some new about Maurice Harris. Unless he's here to scout Maurice Harris for two hours. Who knows? It depends on who wins. <laughs> but Roy talking about some interest, money in Pakistan to perhaps bring a Larry Holmes, George Foreman fight out there. George uh, still has uh, one fight that uh, he's contracted to. He's looking at a Brian Nielsen fight. Perhaps in September and then uh, after that. Although George uh, has uh, other options. George, of course, talked about a rematch with Michael Moore, possibility with Lennox Lewis. Why does George Foreman have these options? Oh, and Larry Holmes going downstairs. Maurice Harris almost in disbelief. We'll look around, readjusting the cup, that is. Maybe readjusting more than that. Good shot. <laughs> Holmes, unfortunately, is way too low. Well, Harris uh, not given time to recoup. I should right back in there. Holmes doesn't like all that movement from Holmes. <laughs> and that's one way to slow that, him down. Will certainly make your opponent seize and, that and movement. And he get, gets away not even with a warning. 
So as I was saying before, why, why does Foreman have these options open and, and it appears as if Holmes does not when you're talking about ancient fighters still in the game? Well, Foreman, remember, started his comeback before Larry Holmes started his comeback. Number one, Foreman's been working on this a long time. Foreman also is a different kind of fighter. He is a puncher, he's a hard hitter, he's very appealing on television. He is a commentator. Does that, does, that, does that mean there should be options open for you? Absolutely. <laughs> I think so. I bet George would agree with me on that. And he is, you know, in his first career, Larry Holmes followed Muhammad Ali. In his second career, he followed George Foreman. And uh, he's taken some heat for that. And there's only uh, one lesson you learned from that. Don't follow. No, no, he's got to wait Lee. for his third career. <laughs> Lee, don't follow. The scenery never changes if you follow the lead dog. Inside the final 30 seconds in round number eight. Asked Larry Holmes, why is he fighting? He says, for money, of course. And then complains that he's only making $225,000 for this one. But he, he's, he likes the competition. He loves the attention. Still a force. All right to see one of his best friends, Larry Holmes. Jerry Cooney, Larry Holmes met each other. Very wealthy individuals. Larry Holmes' earnings over his years about ninety million dollars in purses, another million in earrings and accessories. But his biggest payday came against Jerry Cooney, ten million dollars. That was fifteen years ago. What a fight, too! Oh, in the fourth round, Jerry Cooney buried a left hook in the midsection of Larry Holmes, and I thought it was going to be over. But Larry fought back. Came on back to stop. Jerry Cooney in the 13th round. What a fight. Back and forth, a battle. June of 82. It was Larry Holmes' 12th successful defense. He reigned for seven years as champion. Only Joe Lewis reigned longer. 20 defenses for Larry Holmes. He Matter fought of fact, everybody, too. He fought everybody that was in the top 10. Ali, Norton, Shavers, Burbick, Spinks, both Leon and Michael. Witherspoon, Tyson, Holyfield. The only one he did face, George Foreman. Yes. He wants to do something about that. And also, Maurice Harris. Joe right? Frazier. He did face Frazier, but it was marvelous. I'll pull him from behind the head. He gets a warning. Holmes does. A different complexion in this fight since that fifth round. Second half, Larry certainly turned up the tempo. This is the furthest that Maurice Harris has ever gone in a fight. He has never been beyond eight. Larry Holmes has fought 10 rounds or more on 31 occasions. Nine of those have been 12 round championship fights. Six of them have been 15 round championship fights. And it's the quickness inside now. Harris, now he's holding on, but uh, got to the lips of Larry Holmes. Why is Larry Holmes still fighting? Well, he says there isn't anybody out there to retire me. He, think, he still thinks he could beat current champions, Michael Moore and Lennox Lewis. Larry says if, if he was a champ and you brought a 40-year-old man into the ring, that he'd knock his old butt out of there. He says these guys shouldn't even call themselves champions. And he's got a point. You know, when you retire from boxing, you are made to retire. I was made to retire by my last fight. Ali was made to retire by Larry Holmes. You finally capitulate that you're too old, too slow. Yeah, but, it, but in the meantime, you know, he loses his last fight to who? Brian Nielsen, yeah. although he said it was disputed, out. but still it was close enough. You know, he has trouble with Quinn Navarro, who is the 129th heavyweight, gets KO'd by Douglas. Renowned artist Leroy Neiman, major fight fan. Oh, yeah. I think he's working actually now yeah. as he watches Larry Holmes and Maurice Harris head into the tenth and final round. Great friend of boxing. He told me about how he used to go down to the old garden and watch fights. Just quickly surveying the ringside here. 
fans looking in. They're all our celebrity judges here tonight. They have uh, Maurice Harris slightly ahead going in to the tenth round. And that's just a random sampling. A couple of friends sitting here behind. <laughs> Not with his family. No. There's uh, a few rows behind us. Yeah, they, they have it. Uh, they're seeing it another Shut way. Shut out, yeah. Well, you know what? Maurice Harris has given a good performance. He uh, has shown what he has. There's a lot of heart to get in the ring, and he has fought Larry Holmes. He cannot lose here tonight. Right, exactly. He'll, he, win, he's, he'll win no matter he's, what. He's a winner no matter what. But what about Larry Holmes? Well, Larry just keeps taking it. Doesn't, it doesn't matter with Larry Holmes. Yes, he wants to get the win. Obviously, you want to win. But even if he loses, he can say, hey, it was close. I'm a 47-year-old man. He's, he's got that. If he, loses, if he loses, he said if he lost to Harris, that would be it. But this is obviously close enough to fight. Sure. I mean, do you think this affects a possible foreman date? Not at all. I think it, well, I think it makes it even you know, more attractive. Why? If they, if they fight. Well, because, because Holmes is on television. He's coming off. If, if they do it rapidly, he's coming off a. No, it can't uh, be rapid. This, can't be rapid. Well, they're it's both not going to be until fight. December right. or January. But they both are going to have one more fight. Yeah, if Foreman if, is. Yeah, well, if they, if they sit around and they don't fight, if Larry does not fight, just went into a Foreman fight, I don't think it would be as attractive as this if he's coming off of a win over a fighter like Maurice Harris. Even though Harris, nine, eight, and two. But certainly uh, a deceiving record for Harris, who has come on his last few fights ever since he's gotten serious about the fight game. Certainly has some very nice looking tools. That's great. A very, uh, light heavyweight, though, at uh, 205 pounds. The size that the. Uh, Holmes was when he was a champion, but it uh, doesn't suffice at this point. Every race is just bigger. But with that record, getting himself an opportunity to get into this fight and showcase himself, especially yeah, inside, coming off the Thunder fight. Yeah, inside 30 seconds, and he's still throwing punches, Harris is, making Larry work. Larry, a couple of misses. Does Holmes have a big finish? He says now he understands he fights in spurts, but there have not been that many spurts here tonight. Closing seconds of the fight. So Harris finishes strong. That's anybody's guess as it goes to the cards. Larry Holmes works his way along the ropes to guide him into the corner. And that is it. Ten rounds down. We'll be back with a decision. The 982, Maurice Harris, pull it off. Welcome back to USA's Tuesday Night Fights. The main event is over. Everybody in the ring, Larry Holmes, has certainly worked up a sweat, and at this point, does not know whether he has just gained his 66th win or his seventh loss. Maurice Harris uh, going in there, doing what he had to do to try to pull off uh, what would be for him his major victory coming off right on the heels of the knockout over James Thunder and Larry Holmes hanging over the ropes now looking towards his family going the tough 10 rounds taken 10 by a very mobile young fighter in 22 year old Maurice Harris neither fighter ever in trouble in this fight. Right now, we have the decision. Let's go up to Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Judge Harold Letterman scores it 96, 94, Holmes. Judge Joe Dwyer scores it 96, 94, Harris. Judge Georgie Cologne scores it 96 95 to the winner by split decision, Larry. That 47 year old heart was beating louder and louder. The Holmes contingent 
And at 47, Larry Holmes squeaks this one out. Let's quickly go up to Sean O'Grady with a couple of words with Larry Holmes. Larry, Maurice Harris gave you all you wanted. What do you think now? Well, you know, he's a 21-year-old fighter, 22-year-old fighter, and he reminds me a lot of men back in the day. And uh, this is why I like to say I got a limit, time limit. If I can't get the foreman, there ain't no sense of me keep going on USA. You guys are killing me over here. Oh, Al's killing you. Look behind you. Foreman's creeping up on you. All right, Al, we know what he wants. He still wants George Foreman. Well, it sounds like there's uh, possibly one fight left in the uh, historic 